cost so much. That is true. That is true. I'm interested to see um, what it will be tomorrow <laughs> without getting into politics. <laughs> My car wouldn't start today. I think I left the door open. Oh, no. Quietly. Yeah. Did you get any help with that or you need me to drive over? Oh, you're so sweet. I took the battery out and used my, my brother had left the car here, the one from Florida that went to Connecticut. So I used his car to take the battery. I went to boat, took the battery to auto um, place and it was dead. So I got a new one and put it back in. It works great. Oh, like it was dead, dead, like completely dead. Well, I would have waited an hour for them to see it, if it was going to come back to life. And it had been a couple of years. So I figured, you know, winter's coming. I'll just get a new battery. Understandable. Maybe I should have kept that battery just in case. No, it's all right if, if you needed. But no, you could have called me. I, I'd have driven over. Oh, that was nice of you. Got that if I didn't time. have that car, I would have. Thank you. Do you have a set of jumper cables? I did, but I didn't even think of it until after I took the battery out. No worries. We're getting a few more people coming in. We'll go in and let them in. I was just thankful it didn't happen like a Saturday morning where I had to be at church at a certain time, you know? True, true. So how are you doing? I'm doing good, doing good. Today was a busy day, but um, it's exciting to be able to start this tonight. Um, I do, I did finally get, and I'll explain that in a minute, I did finally get the um, participant's guide sent to me directly from the, the publisher, which is good. Um, so I can give that to you. I'll drop it in the link in just a minute. But um, if you didn't get the email um, about you know, what we're doing, like, with the materials and stuff. I can share that with you uh, tonight. Let me go on. And while we're waiting for those last few people, I'm going to give everybody to about five after, and uh, hopefully they'll be able to join up. In. Thank you for the reminder text. Oh, you're welcome. Hey, I'm, I'm glad that it would work. How are you, Miss Barbie? My work computer. <laughs> I'm off the clock, but I am a bit of a workaholic. So since I have it on, <laughs> oh, I see. Well, hey, just you know, then we can transition over to the the church side tonight. Yeah, I mean, while you were waiting for those five minutes, I just switched over and said, "Oh, let me read some emails. That's less emails to read tomorrow morning." You know what? I do that too. I was explaining to Mark a, while, uh, a little bit ago. I said. Uh, or this weekend, I said, I'm one of the most horrible listeners because I can do more. It Like, I can hear better or pay more attention if I'm doing something. And so when I'm at meetings, I have a tendency to be there on my phone. And, and they're like, oh, you're not paying any attention. I'm like, it, it, you, don't, you don't understand. When I was in college, I got called out twice by the dean. I was in one of his, his um, I was in his class called Christian Spirituality. And he was a very slow speaker. And uh, so usually I got it very quickly. And what I would do is I just started taking notes on the computer. And so I started putting in, I would go to the Internet and add uh, illustrations and all kinds of things to his notes. So I had notes that were, like, able to be sold. And um, it, it, he called me out twice um, saying he thought I was playing on the computer. I don't have that kind of attention span. <laughs> That's pretty awesome, though. Um, so one thing you can do if you're wanting, if you did not get the email with my scanned copies um, in the chat, so it's going to be down. It may have popped up for you, but if you don't know how to get to it, it's going to be on the bottom, um, and it should say chat when you hover over it. If you click that, it will open up a little window that says chat there. And um, what you can do, you can click and download that participant's guide. That's the official one that's going to be used for the whole program. Um, and then we'll have you, if you want a paper copy, which, I mean, I would suggest, I think it would be good. But if you want a paper copy, you can end up getting one of those. Um, you can get one of those this weekend. Now, I have about three copies made at church already, but um, we can get you a few more. 
So good evening, Mark. Um, are we? I just want to double check. Are um, Sonia and Ella going to jump on too? Oh, speaking of which. Yeah, I was just providing technical assistance there upstairs. Oh, that's awesome. Hello, hello. Hello. All right, so I'm, I'm glad to see you all, and um, I'm glad that you could join our, our small group tonight. I, the time is 7.06, so we're going to go on and get started. My goal is to have you out of here by 8.06, um, You know, like make sure we, we get that time. But um, so whenever we have everybody to go, we'll start and we'll finish. Uh, my goal is to finish exactly an hour after, but we might even be a little early. So just so you know, if you're in it for the ride, uh, Heather texted me today and said, how long is it going to be? I said, three hours. And yet she still showed up. <laughs> um, but thank you so much for coming again to start tonight. Um, well, I'll mention that in a minute and we'll, we'll get going. And um, so... We, we have everybody on, and we're going to treat it, again, more like a small group, a Sabbath school. So tonight is a little more understanding yeah. spiritual concepts, but then especially as we move on into other sessions, there's going to be a lot more room for activity. Um, so just so you know, we'll, we'll take a look at that. So let's go in and get started with prayer. And uh, so if you'll just bow your heads or, or turn your screen off or whatever you need to do to... Uh, to feel uh, God's presence, that is fine too. But let's start, let's start with prayer. Father God, thank you so much for being able to uh, have a good group tonight, um, a, a group of, of both um, maybe members who are, are starting out, um, wanting to do things in, in, for, for you, Lord, and, and figure out where you're calling them to, to go. Um, or maybe we have uh, seasoned veterans, as I can see, and those who have been uh, working for the Lord for a really long time and, and wanting to know a little bit more. Because sometimes we may have been doing something, but maybe that's because that's where you called us originally. But maybe you're calling us to something else. I pray and I ask that you will open our minds and allow us to understand more and more about not only the God that you are, but the God who you are in our lives and how you work and, and what you're going to do. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. One thing I'm going to ask, and um, Karen, I don't know if you can see this. I'm going to make you um, the co-host, if you don't mind. That no. way, if as I'm presenting, if you see anybody jump in, you can let them in. Or if somebody falls out, you can let them back in and that kind of thing. Um, so give me just a moment to get set up, and um, I have things here. Just make sure everything is there, ready to go. Um, what we're going to have, too, just while I'm setting this up, uh, a reminder that – oh, you guys went away. Uh, I haven't presented a PowerPoint on Zoom since we were doing church on Zoom. Um, so we'll see how this goes. All right, everyone. Um, almost there. One thing you can do, what I was going to say, and I was trying, I can multitask sometimes, but maybe not as much as I'd like to think I can. Um, if you are looking for the participants guide and didn't get an email from me, you, you in the email you would have gotten certain sections together, things that you can print off if you need or other things that you need. Uh, we'll talk more about your homework because there is homework for this program. And uh, But in the chat window, uh, you'll be able to find um, the participants guide. So you actually have the full program there uh, or the full thing. And if you want that printed, you can print it. But if not, you can download it directly from the chat window. And um, so if you want to, you can print your own copy. But we will have we did have copies at church and uh, we'll get those to you. All right. So with this, let me go on. And now I believe that I can get this started. And uh, I think I'm all ready. If we were meeting in church, it would have already been done and on the screen. <laughs> Here we go. All right. Can everybody see that now? You know what? One thing I need to double check. I need to double check and make sure that, oops, that I have the video done. There we go. 
Thank you all for your your um, your patience this evening. There we go. It wouldn't have worked. I was saying share screen options. There we go. Here, we now have everything ready to go. So tonight we're talking about Eclipse. And uh, so I had somebody ask me tonight, what is Eclipse? Why, why are you sending this to me? And, and what is this all about? And so tonight, uh, one of the, we're going to talk about the first step. But really, it's talking about being able to find out what God has called um, you to do and, and where he wants you to work. So the funny part, it's kind of like this. It's kind of like an analogy of, um, where a pharmacist, um, was working on, uh, giving out medicine and he was sharing medicine with everybody. And he had, apparently the story goes that a, a lady with Crohn's disease came in and he gave her her pills and what ended up happening is, and nobody knew why, is that she um, ended up getting diabetes medicine from this pharmacist instead of the Crohn's disease medicine. And all of a sudden she fell into a coma and ultimately passed away. And the big thing that, that will happen is that sometimes in churches we can get you involved because we, we go, hey, I think you should do this, or there's a need. I need you to fulfill the role of pathfinders. <laughs> um, and yet you can't stand little children. We don't want you to then pass away. Um, we want you to, to find and, and, and be able to do what you need to do, what, what's actually going to make you better, what's going to make you more connected with God. Um, not, it, it should never feel also, I'll put this out there too, um, it, it shouldn't feel like work. I mean, it, it will, but it shouldn't. You shouldn't be like, I don't want to do this anymore. So, in talking about this, um, we're going to start tonight by talking about called to serve. And one of the things that that often people ask me, or that I, I remember, I, I actually I remember thinking about, is that when I first started pastoring, pastoring, yes, is a job. Yes, I get paid for this. But it's also a ministry too. It's 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 something that that I choose to do because if you think about it as a, as a pastor, yes, you're you're getting paid for it. But I remember um, in my very first church, I had a gentleman um, one Wednesday evening as I was presenting our our prayer meeting program. Um, somebody asked about you know how long I planned on on doing this, what I why why I had been called to be a pastor. And before I could even answer, the gentleman spoke up and said, well, he's just here to see whether or not he likes it or not. And then he's going to if he likes it, he's going to go to school. And if not, he'll do something else. And I was like, mm, no, 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 no. <laughs> um, this is the fact that I feel that God has called me into this position. God has said, this is what I want you to do. And so when we think about it, where does that come from? If I'm if I'm remembering or if I'm feeling that way. Is that just something that I know? Is that something that I feel? What What do you guys think? No, oh, everybody muted. You don't have to mute. If you're muted, it's not going to work. Um, where Where do you think that would come from? There's a hint on the screen. Go ahead, Karen. I saw your hand. Well, God had called you to do it. You know, this is something that God impressed you with. Absolutely. And so really, I mean... It, you're right. So God called me to do it. And so therefore, is it just a head knowledge? It's calling. Yeah, it's a calling. It's something that comes from you. You're going to put your your heart and passion and soul into it. It's not just a paycheck. Right. But at the same time, there are those who are going to do ministry that maybe they're already getting and they, they weren't called to that. And they're already getting a really good paycheck. And they're but yet they still feel called by God. Um, and so that's what we're going to talk about tonight. The purpose of tonight is to hear God's calling to ministry and respond to Christ's love by giving heartfelt service to the master. And that's the big deal is that when you're when you're doing this thing, it's not just because maybe, you know, you often hear of the see a need, fill a need idea. But at the same time, it should be something that you're passionate about, something that you're excited about and sometimes yes we do even as a pastor i do that in church where maybe it's not quite my calling um i'll fill in with with something that maybe needs to be done but wouldn't necessarily make that my full-time ministry but so i want you to think about that as we're getting into this 
And so now we're gonna gonna look at some answers. Um, why should I serve? We're gonna talk about that this evening. And so um, this is just where I, I jumped ahead. We're gonna see this video real quick, and hopefully it will still play when we go back. So in answering that question, why should I serve? Um, let's hear some responses from people who have been asked that. Can you hear it okay? Yes, I do. I do. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. No, I don't. Yes. Yes, I do. Yes. No. Yes, I serve in the church. No, I don't. Yes, I do. If you call being an elder for administration is uh, service. I'm head deaconess. Um, I help with the AV team. And uh, as well as teaching in silent school uh, once a month. I help with the lighting in the service. I serve as the treasurer, which is something that I get paid for. And then I also serve as a volunteer in the Cradle Bible Study class. I am the lead audio uh, guy here. Um, I teach the junior Sabbath school class um, once a month, and then I also greet once a month. I teach drums on the worship I am leader over the greeters. And I help substitute primary and kindergarten children. Um, I head out faith, which is feeding and inspiring the hungry or homeless. I like to serve because that's me. Well, serving with the kids, I just think it's great interacting with them. They're hilarious and so much fun. I love it. Seeing the positive impact he has on other people, the help he has on people like you. Nobody's asked me. I don't know. I just enjoy being part of uh, the production and uh, being in the, the slides and the videos. It's satisfying to help um, to give the service a certain feel. And that feel helps people open their minds and their hearts to the message. I like the, the fellowshipping amongst my team. But also with the other people here, you know, you get to come to church. I, I enjoy that. I get to meet people. I get to talk to them. So that's what I like about this also. I'm just too busy. I don't have enough time. With the kids, I just, I love the kids. I love their perspective on God and what he's done in their lives. I love being able to teach them more about the Bible and what Jesus um, has left for us to teach to them. Uh, the freedom. I'm doing it for him. I've done it all my life. And to be able to do it and see enjoyment of others pleases me too so you get pleasure out of it as well as giving it to others i don't think i have any gifts um connecting people that are down and out and need our help i i don't know i do believe that uh, as part of the community we are all called to serve somehow and when i do that it's just fulfilling somehow <laughs> Oh, that was kind of interesting to listen to the people's responses. Um, how did you like when normally when they say yes, you know, it was just yes, I'm doing this or whatever. How did you like the very emphatic no's? <laughs> um, I found that interesting. And actually, I've seen that over the different churches that I've done. When you ask someone, you know, am I serving? Usually there is an emphatic no. Um, and a lot of times it's. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, Michelle uh, Chapora said that she couldn't hear the audio. Could it, could anyone else not hear it? No, at the beginning. At the beginning, I couldn't hear it, but I heard it at the end. Okay, gotcha. Okay. Okay. Well, Welcome, Michelle. By the way, I'm so glad I've got to expand this so I can see everybody else. Um, but I'm I'm glad y'all are here and 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 really glad we get to spend some time together. Um, so as we, we keep going, um, tonight, one of the things that will happen over more over time as we do this, we're going to do a, a little bit more of small groups. And, and since we're already kind of small group, normally I would say break up into two or three or four. But especially on Zoom, that's going to be a little harder. We're not going to go through all of that, that stuff about breakout rooms. We're not, not going to do that. So tonight, um, we're just going to do some small group questions. But before we go there, I just want to give some small group guidelines. Um, I've never thought about doing this, but I, I liked that in this presentation um, they had a little bit of that. So especially for this type of talk, 
when we do have those who have been in it for a long time and those who maybe haven't, um, and myself included, one of, a couple of things we're going to do. Um, the number one rule that we're going to have is that you don't have to share. And if you if you'd rather not, just say pass um, as we go through. And it's going to be a little harder because I, I may just call on you if you you're willing to share. And um, then the other one, what we'll do is um, please avoid, you know, maybe giving, and I'm, I'm talking to myself with this one, please avoid giving other uh, people advice. Um, I, you know, as, as especially as a gentleman, sometimes it's really hard because you're like, I just want to fix it. I want to give you all of my knowledge and part on that. Um, this is an exploration. It's an opportunity for us to, to get to know um, where we're coming from a little better. And then the other is, um, it, as you know, even though, yes, this isn't a nominating committee or, or any of the, the big type of fancy formal meetings, um, this is an opportunity for us to keep it in confidence. And so this is not going to be something that is just shared like the leaves of autumn. So feel free to to share and um, know uh, that I, I do want to be honest. I believe Lonnie is recording it simply so she can watch it because she had to step away. She's She's gone for right now. But it is not going to be posted anywhere, just so you can be aware. I just thought I'd let you know that. That way um, you would know what's going on there. Any questions about that? No? Okay, I see See no head, you know, head, head bob, so thank you. So what I want to do with our group questions tonight is I'm going to ask you some, uh, just a couple of questions about this. Questions very similar to what they were asking in the video. So the first thing we're going to do is um, just go through really quickly. I believe a lot of us know each other already, but, um, you know, maybe it would be fun uh, to know a little bit about that. So tonight, maybe what we can do, since some of us know a little bit of each other um, and, and obviously know that we're relatively close around here, um, maybe share your name and where you're from originally, because I know some of us are, most of us actually are all transplants. And um, so let's uh, be willing to do that. So what I'll do is uh, this is going to be a little harder. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to call your name. And then um, if you'll tell me where you were from originally. So, Karen, where are you from originally? I am originally from Connecticut. I was born in New Haven, Connecticut, and grew up in North Haven, Connecticut. That's awesome. That's awesome. And uh, so going down from my screen, Barbie, you're next. I am originally from New York City, the actual New York City. And I've only been here under two years. Wow. That's so cool. Heather? Born in Michigan, raised in Florida, moved here from Louisiana. So all over. <laughs> um, all right, Lana. Sorry. Um, I was born in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, and I grew up in Richmond, Virginia, and I've been here in the Atlanta area um, since 1989, 1987. Wow, <laughs> so, that's a long time. <laughs> and yes, it's a long time. I'm old. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Sonia. Yes, hi. Um, I was born in Florida, grew up in Connecticut, and have lived in the Atlanta area since 1995. And Ella? <laughs> um, I was born in Atlanta and have been here ever, ever since. That's awesome, awesome. And Mark? Um, I've lived in the Atlanta area since 1984, and I moved here from Florida I'll start a little before that. Okay, okay. And Michelle? Um, born in Zimbabwe, grew up in South Africa, um, been in the U.S. since 2014. That is awesome. Well, Ella, I would say you're in the midst of a bunch of aliens. Because <laughs> um, I, I'm from North Carolina originally. Um, most people, when they think of the Carolinas, they think of the western side. I'm from the eastern side where it's very flat and you can see for miles um, out in, into the horizon. So um, just a different different side, a very different feel out that way. And um, so some questions that I wanted to ask tonight that actually getting in, maybe pertaining a little bit more to this is what makes serving, if you do serve at church, what makes serving at church, or maybe you can talk about your workspace if you're not, workplace if you're not uh, doing that, what makes it a positive experience for you? Uh, those of you who do serve, would you you be willing 
to share maybe what makes it a positive experience for you? My church family makes it a positive experience for me. <laughs> it's the people. For me, it's the kids. I love working with kids and they just provide so much joy. And I feel like I learn from them just as much as they learn from me. That's awesome. Thank you both. I appreciate it. Is there one more? For me, it's just helping others. Okay, so helping others for the kids, for the church family, that's awesome. I appreciate that. Um, what about maybe what makes it difficult or challenging uh, to serve at your church or, or maybe your workplace? Uh, I, for those of you who work out, out of the home, I'm sure that, uh, or at home too, maybe that's just as bad. <laughs> but uh, what makes it difficult, challenging? Again, the people. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> uh, that's true. Lana, there was a quote one time, and I think I, I said that once this week already. Um, there was a quote one time that a pastor said, ministry is one of the absolute most wonderful, amazing jobs you can have if it weren't for the people. <laughs> and which, is, which is funny that he says that because that's all ministry is, right? And without the people, without you the wouldn't people. have a ministry, right? <laughs> So. Yes, that's true. Yeah, if, it's not, if you don't have people, it, it's pointless. Um, it, what else makes it? What else makes it difficult? Schedule for me. Sorry. So I'll take Barbie first, and then we'll go to Michelle. Mm -hmm. It's schedule for me because sometimes I have to travel for work. Okay, so schedule can be difficult. You can also probably put time on that one because it's not just schedule. I'm sure. And lots of other things, you know, um, maybe kids or, or other things could be added to that. Michelle, go ahead. Um, people not stepping up, so then you end up having to take up other roles because, I mean, people not stepping up. Okay, so being, you could probably say that would contribute to burnout, right? Like the, that if you are serving and, and, you'd either get burnt out or maybe you get frustrated that, that people aren't helping. And so you feel kind of like an island that you're on your own. Um, and and I, I've found that that can happen too, that if you're, you're, you're doing that for, um, and, and you don't know what you're supposed to be doing or you don't know what your talents are, um, or you don't know where you've been called, that can happen very quickly. It's why we're doing what we're doing tonight. <laughs> um, <laughs> And so um, I think you guys, I think that was three, if I remember correctly. And um, so we're just doing this just for time. We're going to go on and talk a little bit about um, the parable of the talents. Now, I'm, I used to fight with this all the time and not necessarily use this as talents, because we can even talk about that a little tonight, too, um, the, the difference between a talent and a spiritual gift. But we'll, we'll cover this more as we keep going. But let's define what a talent is. So we're going to go on and do that really quickly. Um, in this particular parable that we're about to read, um, it's the we're going to read it from the Bible. Um, it's the largest unit of currency available in the New Testament. So if you're getting a talent, you are getting a it's almost like winning the lottery. You're getting a decent amount of money. Um, according to um, what this says, and I know that number changes every now and then, uh, but it said it equal to about 15 to 20 years wages for a common laborer. So um, if you are familiar with the story, could you imagine getting just one talent? I mean, if I came to you right now and I gave you 20 years of your current salary, would you be excited? Mm -hmm. I'd be happy with just one of them. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, at 20 years, I mean, that's nuts. Um, and then the other thing that I wanted to define as we get into the parable of the talents is this. In fact, I'm going to ask you before I give the definition, what would you say a servant is? What 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 images are drawn to mind when you think of a servant? Restaurant images, like someone who serves food. Yeah, restaurant images, absolutely, okay. Or maybe a flight attendant, perhaps? Um, maybe somebody who, um, I, I, are there one more who wants to answer before I, I give more? There has to be a, another person. 
with ah, food. that's a good that's a good thought. That if you have a servant, they're 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 serving something, right? Now, often the images of a servant are like like Barbie was saying. It's it's thought of maybe somebody who's making lower wages, somebody who is attending others. But interestingly enough, in the this story, what you're going to find is that many servants in Scripture were actually given large responsibilities, not just small responsibilities. They weren't just the hired help. They were the ones who you you knew you could trust. They were the ones you, you would give uh, even a large responsibility to. So, for instance, one of those thoughts would come from Genesis where um, you, have a, um, you have Abraham's servant being sent to go get a wife for his 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 son uh, Isaac. How many of you would you know want a servant and talk about going and, and getting your your kids uh, their 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 spouse? Huh? No, no takers on that one. Okay, I tried. Um, as we look at it, some things. Uh, they, so it was some were considered actually to be also not just help. They were considered to be an intimate part of the household. And again, you have that same same thing where they knew the family well enough that they weren't just their likes or dislikes, they were actually, um, their opinion was of value too. So this is something to think about as we get into the story. So let's jump right into it. We're going to look at Matthew 25, 14 uh, to 18. And it says, For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country, who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. And to one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one one, uh, to each according to his own ability. And immediately he went on a journey. Then he who had received the five talents went and traded with them and made another five talents. And likewise, he who had received two gained two more also. But he who had received one went and dug in the ground and hid the Lord's money. So this is our, our setup for this part of the story. This is that first part. A little bit of the, the crisis here is we find. So how many servants were there? Three. Three, right? And there's something that's interesting here. Do you notice it says that he, he called them together? As you, as you look, you're going to find um, that he, he called them all together, and then he delivered his goods to them. He gave them something. And each one, to each one that he gave, he knew his servants really, really well. Because notice it says that he gave each according to their own ability as well. That he, if he, you know, if, if he didn't go, okay, well, I know I can really trust you with, with one, but I'm going to give you two because I hope that you're going to do something better with it, right? He gave each according to what they could handle. And then he also, then what I think is really cool is that he didn't say, all right, now we're going to do this together. I'm going to sit and hold your hand and I'm gonna, going to, sh- you know, tell you how to do it. I'm going to show you what you need to do. I already know your abilities. And he went and he left. But one thing that I want to do that was not in the notes that I, and I'm not going to go long on this. I'm just going to share one thing. We often forget when we look at the story, notice what the story specifically says at the very beginning. What is he illustrating here? Is it even a parable about the talents? What is ultimately the, the ultimate goal of this story? It's right at the very beginning. I'm going to pause and see. Uh, It's okay. So it says, notice here at the very beginning, it says, for the kingdom of heaven is like. There's that simile, for the kingdom of heaven is like, and then anything after. So what we're talking about is the fact that we're talking about the kingdom of heaven. We're talking about God's kingdom, being able to do something for the Lord. So I just wanted to make sure that you see that, because sometimes we blaze over it and we get straight into the story. But I want to look here. Notice those four actions. He called, he delivered. And then what's cool is that not only did he, now I'm going to go back, not only did he talk about the ability, but what I think is cool is that when he comes back, now um, it, it, as you look, you you realize, it, it, as you know more about the story, when he comes back, you had a, a couple of things that happened. What did the one who did five, what did he do with it? Hit it. Traded. The one who had five, sorry. I'll clarify in case you, what did the he one who did Traded it for five five different ones. Yeah, he was able to, to do more with it. He invested it, as it were. Maybe, I don't know what the, the ancient Wall Street was or whatever, but he, he was able to do that. Uh, what did the one that had two do? 
the same? He did the same. He invested in me. He's able to do more. And then what about the one, just double checking, make sure you heard the story. What did the one that had one do? Buried it. He buried it. He made sure that he hid it and nothing was going to happen to it, right? Essentially, that's kind of like going and putting something in a safe deposit box. Um, you're going to make sure that nothing happens to it. Now, while you may not lose any money, you're also not going to gain any either. And so notice that here in the four actions, the master called his servants together. He then delivered the talents to them. And then what I think is interesting, too, he matched their abilities with their responsibilities. And that's, that's what I was talking about earlier, that he knew what was going on. He knew what they were like, and he made sure that he was giving them um, what they, they needed. And then it says, then he launched them into service, or they, he went away, and then he says, now, I know you need to do this, but I need you to go on and, and get started. And again, he didn't sit and, and hold the hand, and he didn't walk them through and go, all right, now watch me, and then you do it. He had already been doing that kind of thing. He'd already been working on it. He'd already been showing them. And so he launched them into service. He, he made sure that he was committing them to that. So I think that's cool. So as we look at these four things, you see calling, you see coaching, you see connecting and committing. And so we're going to do some of those four things. It actually is this circle, calls, coaches, connects, commits. Uh, it, what questions do you have about that? Or do you have any questions about that? Okay, just making sure. We have a lot to take in, so we'll be able to get through this. What's neat about this is all believers are called. We know that there are some verses about this. It says, um, and, and as I've said before, tonight is a little bit more talking about the spiritual it's a little bit more on the presentation side, but don't be oh, don't feel that this is going to be every single time. Uh, but it says, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, uh, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who were called or who called you out of the darkness into his marvelous light. So uh, who is a chosen generation, a royal priesthood? We are, right? Yeah. Every single one of us is. Um, that there's not a single person who hasn't been called to do this. And so uh, may, you may not be maybe a, a public speaker, but maybe he's called you to do something else. What we, we realize is that for we are his workmanship, um, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them, Ephesians 2.10. And for those of you, since you didn't get the participants guide, I'll make sure I send a uh, PDF of this as well, so you can fill in your, your guide. It says, For you, brethren, have been called to liberty. Only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. And there comes back that serve, um, being a servant, being able to help others. And But that doesn't necessarily mean that you are lower than they. Does that make sense? Um, now, coming back to the, the story, it says in Matthew 25, 19 to 23, after a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled accounts with them. So he who had received five talents came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you have delivered to me five talents. Look, I have gained five more beside them. So as we know, you mentioned earlier that he invested them. He was able to get five more. Now he's got... And 10 times 20, 200 years wages. Isn't that pretty amazing? Um, I think, I couldn't imagine. His Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. He also, who had received two talents, came and said, Lord, you delivered to me two talents. Look, I have gained two more talents beside them. His Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things, and I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. And so what type of servants would you say these are? Both good, good and faithful. Are they good and faithful, good or faithful? Good and faithful. Okay, I'm just making sure. So they were good and faithful. Here we have a couple of thoughts here. Um, I'm going to go and put these up. You have the Greek works for this. Uh, good would be it, not necessarily like we think about. We often think of great or or perfect or these type of things. Good 
is uh, useful, agreeable, excellent. This is the word in Greek. Uh, these servants were mindful of their jobs. They wanted to make sure that they did, um, for, for lack of a better word, a good job. They wanted to make sure that they were doing the right thing. Um, they were faithful, too. They were trustworthy in their duties. They they didn't shirk the duties, even though they knew. One thing that I, I liked when I've heard this preached before, I've heard them talk about how they actually knew that they might even lose some of it. They might even have some failures, but yet they were willing to move forward. Because if you think about it, if you're investing, you may or may not get the type of return they did. Mm -hmm. um, but here it says that these servants were reliable because their hearts were in their service. And I think that's a big deal. As we look at our symbol for this particular part of the service in, in terms of being called, um, your heart is in it. And I want to ask you, if your heart is in something, are you going to just go, eh, I don't really feel like it tonight? No, right? If your heart's in something, if you if you were like, I really wanted to do that, I've often thought, you know, if I just got that chance to be able, you know, many of you know that something that I would love to do just in terms of just thinking about hobby-wise, but then I need to figure out what to do to make sure to use it for the Lord, is that I've always wanted to be a pilot. And I know that if I had the opportunity to do that, then I would be thrilled. I like I would throw throw my all into it. Now there's also some money involved, but you know anyway. But the thing is, is that 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 is something that when you have a heart into it, you're going to do it. Um, often when we do premarital counseling, we do we talk about skin in the game. We ask you to put a little bit of money into it. Um, not that we're asking you to pay a lot, but we ask you to put a little bit of money into it. Why do we do it? It's because we want you connected to it. We want you willing. And, and, and feeling like you you have part of it that you're 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 going to to be committed to it rather than just go ah eh, well that was pretty good I'm moving on um, and so when I think about it uh, the funny part is why do we use money for that sometimes that's where your heart is right um, <laughs> and so uh, these servants were reliable because their hearts were in their service they they had a heart both for the work and for the master which I think is exciting in ma but there is a in contrast to that, there was a different gentleman, that, that one with just one talent. Matthew 25, 24, and 25 says, Then he who had received one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you to be a what? Hard man. I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. And I was afraid, and I went and I hid your talent in the ground. Look, there you have what is yours. As I think about it, this is really the bare minimum. It's being willing to give back what you were given, but not taking it above and beyond. If you think about it, there is no, I, I think it's important that, I, I just want to go back and look at something real quick. Something that I believe that's important is notice, um, he says, I, Lord, you delivered five talents to me. And I've gained five talents and more besides them. Uh, the same thing with the two servants. Now go back and look at this, though. If you notice, he said, you gave them to me. Now I'm giving them back to you. Notice where the, the talent is for the, the servant who only had one. He says, I'm giving you your talent. This is yours. I don't want to deal with it. I know that you are hard. I know that you're going to do these things. You do these things. You, you, you. Where's the heart for the work? With the master, not the servant. He gives him, he's going, this is yours. I, he never lays claim to it. Here, take it. Please get it away from me. And uh, so as we look at this, there's a turning point here. Uh, the leading character in Jesus' parable is this third servant. Um, he's actually talking about what's going on. He defends his actions to the master by revealing his attitude. It's yours. I, I don't I know what you're, you're like and I don't want to deal with it. I don't I, it's too hard and I just I, I, I don't I don't want to. So how did the master respond? The master said, but the, his Lord answered and said to him in uh, verse 26, you wicked and lazy servant. You knew that I reap where I've not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. So you ought to have deposited the money with the bankers. And at my coming, I would have at least received back my own interest or my own with interest. Therefore, take the talent from him and give it to the, uh, him who has ten talents. For to everyone who has, more will be given, and he who will have abundance. 
But from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away and cast the, uh, or any, then he cast the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. What I find interesting here is that that servant didn't have a heart for it. He wasn't willing to do the work. He wasn't willing to even take the risk. As we think about it for church, no matter what we're doing, maybe we're worried it wouldn't be received well. Maybe we're worried that we wouldn't do well or we might flop or or we might have um, a, a failure. Um, I just watched a, I watched a documentary. I, I um, was really nerdy. And instead of watching a TV show, I watched a documentary on the cars that made America. And what I found interesting is that in an effort to truly make amazing cars, there were many, many flops out there. Any of you ever remember hearing about the Ford Edsel? Mm-hmm. Um, if you, if you look it up, you can find that. I didn't realize that was named after, uh, Henry the second. So, you know, the, the grandson of Henry Ford that was named after his dad and it was a flop. Can you imagine having the family name put on a car and then it flops? Um, <laughs> that's pretty rough. And so as, but as we think about it here, this is what, it, what God is talking about. He's saying, you know what? You weren't even willing to try. You didn't even do the bare like I said bare minimum earlier, you didn't even do the bare minimum. You could have taken the bare minimum and just went to the bankers, put it in, and at least I would have had interest. But you were so worried about how I might react or what might happen or your failure. You were so worried about you that you weren't willing to think about anybody else. And I just found that really interesting because here, because of that, he then takes the talent away. And he says, you know what, I'm going to give that to the one who is willing to do this, who does want to, to do the, these things. So as we think about it here, there's already already a, a little bit of that, the reasons for not serving. I asked you that earlier, but again, why was the, I'm going to ask one more time, why was the, the servant, why was he unwilling to do anything with that talent? What was he afraid of? Go ahead, Karen. Well, I don't think he really liked his master. He was a hard man. I don't think there was a good relationship there for them to work with. And so he probably just didn't even want to deal with it. That's a really good good answer because, again, that goes right back to the heart, right? Um, if you are also not liking the one you serve or the ones you serve with, you're going to have a hard time with that, right? Mm-hmm. You're gonna you're not not willing to overcome it and say, you know what, I'm I'm going to work my hardest for this. Um, when we think about a job, um, you know, if you're feeling frustrated or if you feel that there's there's something that you you know maybe. Um, uh, I don't know, maybe something came up at work and, and somebody, um, you know, ate something of yours out of the fridge. I don't know. <laughs> and you get upset with them. If it could be and, that easy. Uh, you don't really want to be there. What, Karen? If it could be that easy. Oh, right. Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> but uh, or maybe maybe, you know what, maybe something came around and and maybe somebody said something that you didn't like or or maybe um, there was a a program that came around that you were just like, man, that really was a flop. I don't feel, and you put so much work into it and it just didn't, didn't come out well. Um, and then would you really be wanting to do it? You know, again, what is your, where is your heart is the big question I'm asking with all of this. As you look at it, all of these questions are coming down to, well, why am I doing it? And if the question is, why am I doing it? And the answer comes back, well, Pastor Keith asked me to do it on nominating committee. More than likely, you're not going to be in it for very long. Um, you know, or, or why are you doing it? Well, nobody else was willing, so I, I'm doing it. Um, your heart. I, I also think there, there was like fear of failure there. And, and when you fear failure, you don't even try. Like it's crippling. I completely agree with you, Barbie. Um, if you feel a failure, then you're not even going to try. Um, and, and I think that's a, that is, a, a really quotable quote from tonight. If you fear failure, you won't, you're not even willing to try. And you know what? I can even say I there have been times in my life where I've even felt that way. Let's be honest. I even felt that way about this program. Um, I don't even know how many people are going to come. Um, you know, n- no offense, but thank you all for coming tonight. Really appreciate it. <laughs> but I will say, like, some of that is 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 to it. Is this actually going to work? So as we think about reasons for not serving, there's all kinds of them, but challenges in the church, challenges with life, challenges with your heart. Um, I had, you know, there was one time a, a pastor that I was serving under, my mentoring pastor, 
when I was a student pastor in Southern, um, his wife at the time that he was serving um, was dying of love, lung cancer um, and had never smoked a day in her life. Um, that would be really hard to continue, um, you know, doing ministry and, and doing the work. Um, would y'all give me one second? Sorry, I was trying something. Um, the other intercom system. <laughs> if you could read my lips. And um, But as we're looking at this, one of the key points in the parable is actually this. Our attitude toward God shapes the service for God. So, Karen, exactly what you said, and I'm so glad you brought it up. That was perfect. If you don't want to serve the master and you're worried what the master is going to do, you're not going to do anything. If you're afraid that God is going to do something to you if you mess up or if you just don't do the right work or if you don't do well, um, then you're gonna gonna really struggle, right? Anybody have anything to add to that? Just making sure, just checking. But that's the relationship with the person, but we also have to realize we're all human beings and we all have insecurities, regardless of what people think we might be talented in or not. Whenever we're doing a job, I think we're harder on ourselves than anyone else. And so, you know, besides the relationship with the master, there's also that human quality of we're not good enough, you know, or we're not doing as good a job as we would like to do, or we could do better, or, you know, and, and so there's always that to contend with. And then when someone else doesn't think you're doing as well, that even comes down harder and that that's human nature to go there and to think that too. Absolutely. And I mean, and we all get that from time to time, but I will say, and it's the one thing that I mentioned that earlier. Um, and, and Karen is familiar with these stories and I think I've shared some with Mark and the elders have caught it a little bit more. Um, it, they've heard a little bit of my, my horror stories about, you know, elders that I've dealt with that have not been as supportive or as kind as both of them. And um, that was that guy that I said earlier that he's like, oh, he, he's only here until he figures out whether he likes this or not. Uh, what's interesting, though, when you have a heart for God, I remember one night going home and in my um, and, and being a little vulnerable here, but it, or more. <laughs> um, I remember going home and just laying down face down on the bed and just crying like uh, over being so frustrated over what this guy was doing. I mean, he was literally undermining like I mean, he. He wanted to be a pastor, and it was just a mess. But what was going on is that even if you have people around like that, what's amazing is that if your heart is for God, I remember one of the bolstering things that I said, which it came from here, not from here, is that I remember thinking of what he had said when he said, oh, he's just here until he likes it, uh, or you know, until he finds he likes it. And I'm going, with you here, and my thought was, I didn't say this to him, none of this, you get it, you're getting it. I'm not sharing it with you. I'd never share it with him. Although now maybe I'd have enough courage to do that now. But one of the things that I, I did is I said, I remember being frustrated and going, you know what? My thing is, is that I, I, oh, these people, if, if I can't believe I'm doing all of this and, and I'm having to deal with him and blah, 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 blah. And then I said, and he has no clue that I'm not here just to see whether I like it or whether, and then go off to school and just, you know, go have a vacation. I go, I am here because the Lord has called me to be here. Otherwise, I would have left. And I remember these exact words. Otherwise, I would have left a long time ago. And I think that's the big deal is that when you are doing something for the Lord, when you even more so actually, I, and I would even say this. And so if I can be so bold as to say this, when you're doing this for the Lord, there's going to be times where maybe you go, man, you know what? I, I, maybe I should take a break and maybe I should just step back and let somebody else do it for a while. Um, I, I'm tired and the, 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 the complaints and the, the frustrations and just the hours are exhausted and you have that list of excuses. But then the thing is, is that then you go, well, why am I doing it? Well, I'm doing this for the Lord and you will, it's amazing what that, that will do for you. Um, now I'm not meant to, I, I don't, I will say I, I tread lightly because I, know that all of us, myself included, have felt that way. So therefore, if you're feeling that way now, I'm not coming down on you hard. Don't don't feel I'm trying to step on your toes to guilt you into something. 
That is not my intention. And if any of you are concerned about that, talk with me after. But but the thing is, is that when you have a heart for the Lord, even if you do take a break, there will be a time when you do come back because it is for God and it's what's calling. But maybe you don't need to step back into the thing that you were doing, what caused you to feel burnt out or tired in the first place. Maybe God has called you into something new. Does that make sense to everyone? Okay, good. Um, and then again, with our heart here, Mark 10, uh, 45 says, For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, to, and to give his life for the ransom for many. And I thought this was amazing, because, I mean, if you think about it, if he was doing something just to be able to uh, get praises and to, to feel good about what he was doing, he, he came with for the wrong job, <laughs> um, right? And uh, as we think about it, we want to be able to, in that moment, now, Lord willing, we won't be crucified like Christ, although there is that verse about being crucified with Christ. We can talk about that another time. But at the same time, we are doing this for the Lord. If you think about it, even Jesus was called to do this. He was the one called, laid, slain from the foundation of the, the world, right? We, we talked about that in Sabbath school. This is something that, that he was called to do. And so even in that moment, even when he's questioning us in Gethsemane, going, Lord, isn't there anybody else who can do this? Take this cup from me, right? He didn't say it in exact those words, but it's what he's implying. He's saying, you know, it, nevertheless, not my will, but yours. If you said I got to do it, sure, I love you, Lord, and I'm going to. That's powerful. Or at least it is for me. Um, and, I, and I hope it would be for you. And so here, just at the end, I thought I'd share with you a little bit about um, what's going to be happening over this next little bit. So calling is something that I can't give that to you. Um, I can't go and say, and I think you need to be careful with that sometimes, too, because I know that 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 sometimes in a, in a way to, and I'm going to say this carefully, but sometimes in a way to maybe guilt you into something or something, maybe sometimes somebody goes, you know what, God has called you to do this. And you really need to pray about that and decide and answer that from from prayer, whether or not he truly has. And I hope that that helps you with that, because sometimes people see what you're doing. And I actually said this um, in just thinking about organizing committee recently. I said, here's my thing is I told the organizing committee, I said, I don't care how qualified the person is. I don't care how good and talented they are at something. If they're not willing to have the heart for it, if they're not willing to do it for God, then I don't, we don't need to do, be a part of that. Because if you are willing to do it for God, you're going to be qualified. You're going, God will, will equip you. He'll take care of you. He'll do whatever you need. But we have to be able to give our hearts to God that way. Yes? And so really my appeal to you this evening is to do so. As I said, this could be used as a sermon. It's just really long. <laughs> um, but what's funny is that this this is our opportunity as we move into these next few sessions over the, the next couple of weeks. What we're going to do, I'm not going to do this the, the week of Thanksgiving, so no, we're going to take a break that week. But there's going to be um, at, at least four more sessions, or three more sessions, and one of them may need, just because of time, may need to be broken in two, and we'll talk about that, because the next one is really heavy, and there's really two parts that we need to cover. So hopefully you would be willing to do that. But um, over this next little bit, we're going to find out what God has called you to do. But I'd like for you to start praying about about that calling. Maybe start praying and going, Lord, no matter what the inventory assessment is, what do you want me to do? And um, because sometimes he calls you. I mentioned that. Actually, I said that in my Sabbath school um, this week. I said um, that we were talking about this and I said, I don't like to read. I'm not a big reader, even though I have a ton of books on my shelf. And I don't particularly like to be up front. And so I laugh because I'm going, why on earth would God call me to be a pastor? And then I realized because he's the one that can then step over and take over those deficiencies, not me. I, there's never a moment where I can go, well, look at what I can do. Um, and so that's what we want to do as we're talking about where God has called you to be. So I just have a video here at the end. So I'm going to share that real quick, or I think it's a video. Maybe it's just the end. Um, so <laughs> fade into darkness. <laughs> um, we don't want you to do that. We want you to go a step into the light. So with that, um, what we have is just this final verse. It says, Matthew 10, 39, he who finds his life will lose it. And he who loses his life for my sake will find it. 
this is that part about taking up your cross, being willing to give God your all. We've been talking about the cost of discipleship and all of this rolls into one. And so um, as we think about personal reflection, um, I'd like for you to think about, as you're thinking about what God is calling me to do, um, now you can't check the screen, but you can think about it in, in your mind. Um, maybe I've never really found my niche when it comes to what God wants you to do. Maybe you've done a lot. Many people have had a resume. Um, there's several in our church that aren't participating at all, and their resume is, is as long as mine, if not sometimes longer. Um, of more things that they've done for the Lord. Or maybe you said, I've, I've, uh, I admit that I've compared, you know, to what other people are doing. Maybe I'm not doing as well. I have a program that we will do in the coming year, um, a discipleship program that I hope to do just like this one, um, that is from a pastor, uh, Tara Ben Cross. And I remember I worked with her in Pennsylvania, and I remember as a pastor, I felt like I was doing nothing compared to her. I mean, well, for one, she put out a program that literally I bought. Um, but then the other one, you know, like, like as you look at it, you, you have that tendency to compare. Well, maybe I didn't do as good as a, a Pathfinder leader as so-and-so or et cetera. Um, you know, maybe you've fallen into that. Or maybe you can say, um, you know what, I'm open to serve. Um, maybe maybe I'm willing to, to say, Lord, I, I'll do what you want me to do. Um, and, and so I just want you to think about these questions, um, as we go, um, as we wrap up here and before we pray, I have a little bit of talk about your homework, but I wanted to ask, um, what questions you might have here? Um, what do you have before we move forward? Okay. As I heard a presenter say one time, either I've left you completely in the dark or uh, I've done so well that and perfect that you guys don't have any questions. So that's good. Um, I'm probably, anyway, I doubt it's the second. But anyway, if you have any questions, here's my thing. Feel free to reach out, call me, email me, um, whatever you may need. Because as we get into it more, the next few little things that we do are going to be more involved. And so with that, I would hope we're going to talk about the homework now. I'm going to have you do something that, that, as you know, with any spiritual gift program, if you don't have a spiritual gift assessment or, or an inventory, um, then you don't really have a place to go. Maybe you can just say, well, I thought that's what I was supposed to do, um, and you'd go just based on interest. But um, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about um, the, the survey. Um, and by the way, before we get there, our next session, um, and before I tell you about the homework, our next section is going to be called Coached to Serve. So we're going to have a little bit of coaching a little bit of um, opportunity to do things together and group activities. So just wanted you guys to be aware of that as we go. So I'm going to stop my, uh, or I'm going to stop this sharing just a minute because I want to um, show you um, what we're going to get you to do. So for your homework, uh, there are two uh, different things that I'm going to ask you to do. Okay. How many? Two. All right. Good. Peace, everybody. I'm glad y'all are willing to, to do this with me. <laughs> um, so let me just share my, my screen on the, the other side real quick. Oh, the kids. Okay. Um, what we're going to do is um, share this with you. I'm going to ask you to do your uh, spiritual gift inventory, and there's two ways you can do it. First of all, on the um, in either in the link in the chat that uh, you have or in the email that I sent you, in either way, it's from the participant's guide. And what I want you to do, can everybody see this okay? Yes. What we're going to do is um, you're going to find it. Notice here on page 30 of this particular guide, you're looking for the spiritual gifts inventory and then also gift input assessment. These are the two things that I'm going to ask you to do. And so let's, um, I thought this was the PDF, but let's just skip ahead real quick and I'll show it to you. We'll see if I can, can move forward real quick. On this one, under the spiritual gifts inventory, um, on page 30, you're going to find this. There are 100 questions. I know that's a lot, but it is uh, helps us narrow down where you're going to be. What you can do, you can circle these. So if you want to, you can print off page thir uh, uh, the, these few pages. You can find find those out. But you're going to going to look at them, and you're going to do them as one to five. One being the statement is always false or does not apply. And then five being the statement is always true. 
So for instance, um, maybe if you are wanting to church plant or you're a church planter, because obviously that's what that question is about. It says, I dream of starting churches in new places where there is no church. Um, when you do the assessment, you're going to mark from one to five. And it's interesting how that changes, because I remember getting right out of school, there was even maybe a four for me on that one. I thought that um, I was going to, actually, when I interviewed with the Carolina Conference, where I'm from, I said, hey, I really want to do a church plant out on the Outer Banks, because you, in order to do that, you have to be part of who they are. Um, you have to be from there. And what I was so excited, I just saw the ministerial director from there, and we ha we happened to be friends from that same church that I student pastored at, and uh, he's now in that role. And uh, and I told him about that, and he said, well, guess what? They're actually, and if you don't know the area, then this, you can look it up on a map. But he goes, Keith, I'm so excited to tell you there is somebody doing that right now, and they actually have started a small home church on Mantio, uh, which wow. is is amazing. Um, if you and if you don't know the area, that's way out there on the coast. Like that's uh, only maybe uh, 10, 15 more miles, and you're in the ocean on the way to to, to London. <laughs> um, so it's pretty amazing. And uh, and the other one that you're going to have is this. And then I need to let you go. I realize I've, I've talked a little too long on this one. Um, you're going to look at at page 39 is the gift input assessment. Now, you have three of them. You have one, two, and three. But what this is for is this is different. This is not for you to mark on. What you're going to do is you're going to print the three of them, and you're going to hand it to people that you know. Um, so I would say maybe give one um, to your uh, – maybe give one to your – teacher if you have one it, you know if you're willing to do that sorry ella um or maybe give one to you, your coworker or somebody at church um i will say i may personally step out of this one so i i would say give it to your pastor but maybe not um <laughs> that way you can do do more or if you need it if you can't find anybody i'd be glad to but um just if you need help maybe finding somebody I, i'd be glad to do that but give this to somebody who knows you well because the thing that's interesting is that sometimes while you may present yourself as being um, maybe you look and you go, man, I'm super confident. And they're like, you need to be a teacher or you need to be um, in evangelism or I'm looking at some of the other ones. You, you need to be an apostle. I don't know um, that maybe your gift is not that and you'd rather be involved in hospitality and a servant, maybe taking care of somebody. Maybe your job at work is all of those things, and you just want to take a break from that. Um, I've seen it where teachers come, and they're like, just give me a break. Um, <laughs> I don't want to deal with kids anymore. Um, those are going to be your two things. And the last thing, um, this is technically our end, and I'm going to pray, because I know I told you 8 6 7 they started around that time. And so we're going to pray real quick here at the end. But if you want to know how, if you don't know how to get an app, you can also, rather than having to print these things, there is an app on your iPhone. And so if you're wanting to know how that works or how to find that, um, I will show that here at a screen share at the end of the presentation. But so that way you don't feel held hostage. If you want to go, you can go. OK, um, so let's go on and pray. So now I'll pause one last time. Are there any questions? What questions do you have for me? You said iPhone. Does does the app also work for Android? Yes, um, I didn't mean to leave you out there, Barbie. Yes, it also works on Android. So um, you can find it in the Google Play Store. Um, but I'll show you, show you at least for Apple, because that's all I have. I'll, I can show you how to get there. Um, all right, let's pause and we'll pray here at the end. Father God, thank you so much for the group that we have tonight. Thank you for those who are willing to take their time out of their busy schedule to find out more about how you've called them. And I know, looking especially at the faces of those who are here, that you have truly called each and every one of them, that you are going to lead them into where you want them to be. And so, Lord, may we also, in turn, as we go through this process, may we, in turn, give you the reins for that. May we not try and steer, um, especially myself, knowing where, yes, there may be deficiencies in church, things that I need done, but that doesn't matter. Lord, you will fill that role. You will be able to take care of that. But may you put us in a place where we, having a heart for you, can then also in turn put our heart 
and our, our really all of our living soul into that. Uh, continue to lead and guide us, and thank you so much for being our God and our Savior. I pray this in your Son, Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, so as I said, thank you guys for coming tonight. Um, again, if you, if you it, also if there's any comments, you're welcome to, to do that or let know. But um, would you guys like to see real quick? If I know you guys probably well, know how to download what's an app. The, what's the name of the app? So it's going to be Equip. Now, there are several other Equips on there, and that's why I said I thought I would show you um, what how to do that. Yeah, I want to see it. I already tried, and I saw a ton of Eclipse on there. Yeah, there's several. And so I don't have the Play Store. I'm sorry, Barbie, um, okay. for that. But let me let me just show you real quick. Oh, great. A plug-in is required. <laughs> it looks like it's called Equip Membership Ministry. There you go. Two Ps. One, like to equip the verb. Got it. Try this one more time. It didn't come up, so. I searched equip spiritual gifts. And That's what I searched, yeah. It, yeah, it was the second thing that came up on my list. Oh, yeah. I'm able to connect. I tell you what, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do it. <laughs> Ironically, this is the old school version on Zoom. How's that work? Anyway, I'm going to do it this way. Can you all see my screen? I'm going to turn off the blur. You guys can see my messy office here at the house. Everybody see okay? What you're going to do, go to, let's see. You're going to go to your app store. And then you're going to search. I, I just typed in equip. That way you, you don't get anything else. So just equip like that. And then I hit search. Okay, now it's going to come up with several, so I'm going to try and read backwards. But as you go down through it, so let's see, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ha, huh, that's funny, seven. Um, so seven down for me, um, mine is, seven down for me, mine is this one. So you're going to look for this one that looks like that. If you'll see, remember that little circle with the heart? Um, so like, like Mark said, equip, um, membership ministry, um, and on here, there's going to be some really cool things. So I'm just going to open my app real quick and show it to you. So you'll, you'll start with this first screen and it's going to talk and tell you a little bit about it and what's going on. And then down here on the bottom, you can actually hit inventory and that's when you can see, I started mine just so I could show it to you. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to, going to start yours this way. So yours is actually, I'm going to delete mine just so you can see it. Um, so it's going to ask you to put your name in. So you put your name in and then you hit next, um, which is down here on the bo bottom right. And then you, there you go. There you can start it. And if you yes, go all the way through, you can do that. You can, now here's the cool part. You can leave it. Like let's say I only did the first one, then it will save your assessment. So even if you're having multiple shared devices, like maybe, um, like I'm going to do this with Nathaniel or I plan to, I can share both of mine together. Now, um, another one that you have is the next one over says assessment. This is a cool one. It's something where you can then type it and say, um, you can put in your assessor. Let's say I'm going to say, um, let's say I'm going to say my friend Jordan. We'll put that in there. So I put Jordan's name in like that, and then I hit next, and then um, you can actually write there with them. Now, you can't email it to them, unfortunately, but right there with them, you could either just hand them the phone or have them, maybe you can read them to them and say, hey, can you answer this for me? And then you can save your assessors right there. So, like, let's say um, he says that I have the gift of, we'll, we'll, we'll put something in there, say encouragement, and then I hit save. It will then uh, save my assessor right here. And then if you want to go back to it, um, I thought you can save it that way. I'll have to play with it, but um, apparently you'll have an assessor right there. Okay? Or you can just print them the version. Um, for those of you who got my email this week um, or today, you can. there is a separate sheet, so you don't have to try and print it off from the PDF unless you want to. It'll probably come out cleaner that way. 
but um, feel free to do that. If any of you need it printed, please have shoot me a text, an email. Um, I will be glad to do it at church. One of the cool things about church is that other than the paper cost, it only costs per black copy cost less than a cent. Um, so if you need anything printed like that, please let us know. Any other questions before we leave? Do you? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Go ahead, go ahead, Barbie. I, 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 I saw. Um, I heard you first, and then we'll get Sonia. Um, do you recommend that we use our spouse as one of our assessors, or preferably not? Whatever you say, whatever you feel comfortable with. Um, I would say a spouse can be a good one because they'll know really the the inner thoughts too. Um, you know, probably more so than somebody else. Um, maybe just you know somebody random at church. But yes, that's a that's a good question. I'm not going to. I'm gonna let you be the judge of it. Um, and you know, you can choose to do what you you think is best. Uh, Sonia. Yeah. Um. You might have mentioned this, but would you like us to have this completed by next week? Yes, please. Um, because if you if you have an opportunity to do that by next week, it will really make the session next week. You'll you'll be able to connect with it a lot better because you'll have answers and it, it won't be as nebulous for you. Okay. Okay. Both really good questions. Thank you both. Um, anything else? All right. Well, thank you guys I think for your time. Email. What? Oh, Michelle, go ahead. I didn't get the email. I only knew about this zoom via text yay it works <laughs> um michelle what i'm going to do if you want to text me your email because i think i have it but just in case um i will email you the link or down here on the bottom now that's the one thing zoom you have to actually turn on zoom to show the zoom screen but if you will go down and you open up your window where it says um mute stop video security participants chat if you click chat, you can actually get it right there. It says, um, well, and you were already using it, actually, So, because you said I can't hear anything. What you do, click that participant's guide, and you should be able to save it. So actually, the easiest thing, hit um, those three dots. You can click open file, and uh, you can, or you can click it to open it. And then you can download it onto your computer. And if not, anything. I'll probably email it again too. Just now that I have most of you, um, uh, most of your emails. Okay, I guess I'll, I'll just text you my email. Then you can just send me the link, please, because I can't see anything on the chat. Yeah, I think you put that in before she joined, Pastor. Oh, okay. Well, I will. I will email it to you. Um, because what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make a new email list with all of the ones who attended tonight. So we'll we'll make sure that we we get that to you. Okay. Thank you all so much. Um, I hope you enjoyed tonight. And like I said, next week's going to be even more fun because there's going to be activity behind it. So um, thank you all. Awesome. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Be safe. Good night. 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 All right. So Lonnie and Scott, since this is uh, the two of you um, left, I don't know if Lonnie, you ever made it back. But I just want to say thank you for coming and thank you all for uh, recording. Anyway, talk to you later.